Hello everyone and thank you for tuning in to feature number three of the MSCA Quaker State Late Model Series. So let's just get right on into it. Starting lineups for your Cedarburg feature. Starting up front, Eric Hyden and Jack Porkins. Jack Porkins is going to make the pole for this one. Zachary Fitzwater and Eric Willis make up row two. Ferdinand Gabot and Matthew Brown make up row three. Mike Sarah, Brock McMahon are row four. Row five, Chris Dodd and Daniel Maxwell. Row six, the bottom half is Joshua Jones and Dejon Weeks. Row seven is going to be Tanya Brayer inside, JT Hanley outside. Row eight is going to be Roy Bruce and Gabriel Wongerly. A nice job making him himself inside the feature. Row 9 is going to be Patrick Curtis and Lucas Tran. And finally, rounding out your field is the 98 of Jake Rogers and the 50 of Alex Tanker. So, that is going to be your lineup. Let's get this feature event underway here at Cedarburg as Jeff Porkins leads him around the field. And green flag is out. We are back underway here at Cedarburg. Feature time. Porkins getting a good jump off of the start as he goes down on the inside and makes sure he's clear of Eric Hyden coming into turn three. As you can see, Zachary Fitzwater also back there. Fitzwater doing his best to try and get by the 62V of Eric, of Eric Hyden. Fitzwater and Hyden are side by side as Jeff Porkins is out there up at the front of the field. Porkins leading the first lap. And he looks like he will also be able to lead the second lap too. But here comes Fitzwater on the inside. Fitzwater able to catch the inside of the 26 car. But the 26 pulls away a little bit going down the front straightaway. Now the 56 is, uh, the 59 is right down on his bottom side. And you can see Ferdinand Gabot also there. I believe that Jack Porkins led that lap. And now we're going to see from the 76 car's view, Ferdinand Gabot of this race. You can see the 59 is uh, completely clear of Porkins now as they head into, into uh, the front straightaway. For lap number 5, Jack Porkins kind of stuck on the high line. And this track has been really bad for drivers on the high line. you really got to get down to the bottom side if you want to be able to do well at this racetrack. And now Ferdinand Gabot with a nice run coming out of turn 4. Gonna possibly try to take over the spot from the 56 from the 59 car. The 59 of Fitzwater. His I believe his first feature event. As you can see the back of the uh, the 76 car, there's the 24Y of uh, of Mike Sarah. He started out in the fourth row inside, so he's made his way up the field a long ways. But not as long as some people as Tanya Brayer was right behind him. You see the four of Lucas Tram, second feature appearance. He missed the first feature event. Currently, he's back in 13th position, and uh, he's just he's kind of been he's been struggling a little bit at this racetrack, but has been able to make it in. Uh, quite possibly the best driver at DW Motorsports, but DW Motorsports at the moment has just been really inconsistent. Uh, Dejon Weeks not having the best finishes, but that win really sealed a lot for uh, Lucas Tran. So, Lu so Lucas just trying to get another good finish. As you can see, he's kind of piling through the field now, getting under three wide between um, three wide below Chris Dodd and uh, the 50 of Alex Tanker. Tanker managing to get by Chris Dodd as Dodd will now uh, try to defend his position against uh, the the G5 of Brock McMahon, I guess it does not work though, as Brock McMahon is going to keep following the four car around the track. Another driver, the second driver to win a race here is Tanya Brayer in the 13B car. She started back a little bit in the field, but she has managed to get herself a little bit farther up, but now it's starting to fall back as she has the high line uh, on the racetrack, and that's really where you don't want to be. And Brayer just trying to find a uh, just trying to find a little bit of a groove here she's made a second feature so far and uh, is the only female driver to win in the Quaker State Late Model Series thus far this season considering that she won considering there's only two female drivers but she managed to be the second she managed to be the first one to get the victory the 13b car however has been fairly decent whenever she gets into a race just has 
just uh, barely misses or uh, gets a decent finish with whenever she's in the feature event. And right now it looks like she may not be able to win, but at least she's going to be able to get a good finish. And uh, and that's really what she needs at the moment is just good finishes. She's got the win, and if she can get another one at least, it'll help her a lot. Mike Sarah, however, has gotten by the 76 of, uh, of Ferdinand Gabot. He's been probably the most dominant car so far. He started back in 7th position, I believe, uh, in row 4, and he's been one of the better cars this entire race. Ferdinand Gabot in 2nd, and uh, Sarah's, Sarah's uh, shock, shock mate. They're not teammates because they don't own, because, um, well, you can consider them teammates, but they don't have one person owning both of their cars. They only, they both own each of their cars, respectively. So Sarah owns his, and Hayden owns his, but they work out of the same shop, so they usually come to the race together. They're, they're again, not teammates, but unofficially they could be considered teammates and right now you can see both of those cars doing very well Haydn not doing as well as uh, Sarah but both of these drivers have really been consistent so far I believe the most consistent drivers in the series uh, bes besides uh, Roy Bruce who is not doing too well this race he managed to uh, get into the feature I believe from the else from the last chance showdown but Roy Bruce continuing his perfect run of making it into features. But behind him, the 24Y, the 24Y and the 62V are probably the most consistent drivers on the track. Uh, I think the fourth most consistent would probably be either Alex Tanker or Brock McMahon. Brock McMahon currently in fourth behind uh, the four car of Lucas Tran. A good, a good run from from Lucas Tran at the moment. And that's really what he needs, but Eric Hyten and, and, and Mike Sarah just continuing their consistent runs at, at the front. And uh, speaking of Brock McMahon, he uh, is currently running fourth right now. Uh, one, of the, one of the better drivers, I would say, in the, in the field. And uh, is currently running behind the four car of Lucas Tran and just trying to get a better, uh, better vantage point. Manages a really good run off of the corner and uh, gets side by side with Lucas Tran going down the straightaway. And uh, this is really where Brock, this is a track that Brock McMahon has been really good at uh, this uh, tonight. As it, as it as he's just been on fire, he made it through from his, from his heat race and he's just been continually making the, uh, making the other drivers look kind of embarrassed because this, this is probably one of the most unorthodox paint schemes that I've seen out of a lot of different late model drivers. This one is kind of uh, a little bit of everything and thrown together with the car. But it really uh, it, it, it really doesn't matter the way the car looks as long as it's up at the front of the field and that's really kind of what Brock McMahon has shown in that G5 GRT and that's, uh, and that's kind of the thing that uh, he's really been uh, showing. But you can see up at the front Ferdinand Gabot was trying to get by the 24Y of Mike Sarah, as they have been kind of back and forth a little bit. Gabot not really been able to lead a whole lot of laps, but he's been on the tail of the 24Y and now currently is in the lead with that 76 car. Coming down into turn three, Mike Sarah kind of just staying back, waiting for his moment, and looks like that's going to be his chance to possibly run something as uh, he goes down low, he's going to get to uh, the 76, and he's going to be able to get by, but not completely as they run into turns 3 and 4 side by side. Mike Sarah taking two laps to go. Green flag is flying. The 24Y has just been the most dominant car out on the track today. I don't know how he managed to, uh, I don't know what he did to that car, but he really managed to change it as one lap remains the 24y current leader and Ferdinand Gabot looks like he's going to be a little bit too far behind the 24y if Mike Sarah to do anything and Mike Sarah's going to come home with the win here at Cedarburg and it looks like Eric Hyden is going to finish in third 
So a nice win by the 24Y as he's gonna uh, attempt to do burnouts. We haven't seen a very good uh, we haven't seen a very good burn down in three races so far. So Mike Sarah attempting to do burnouts, but dirt tracks not the best for burnouts. Here's your finishing lineups: Mike Sarah, Gabot, Eric Hyden, Brock McMahon, Lucas Brands, your top five, Zachary Fitzwater, nice finish in six, Joshua Jones seventh, Tanya Burr eighth, Alex Tanker ninth, and Matthew Brown will finish in. 10th. That is your top 10. Now for the middle 10 with Patrick Curtis, Dejon Weeks, Daniel Maxwell in third in uh, 13th. 14th is Roy Bruce. Not the best finish. 15th Jake Rogers. 16th Eric Willis. 17th JT Hanley. 18th Chris Dodd. 19th Gabriel Wanderley. And last place Jack Porkins. Not the finish he wanted tonight. Here's your point standings. Eric Hyden leading that with that great finish. Roy Bruce in second, losing the points lead after two races. Brock Mahon third. Fourth is Lucas Tran. Fifth, Tanya Brayer. Sixth, Cody Smart. Or sixth, Tanya Brayer. Seventh, Cody Smart. Eighth, Joshua Jones. Patrick Curtis. Ninth, Chris Dodd in tenth. Callum Wood is going to finish it. Is going to be eleventh. Twelfth is Matthew Brown. Three-way tie for thirteenth. Between Dejan Leakes, Kyle Maxwell, Nick Pericles, Kyle Collins, and 16th, 17th, Jake Rogers, 18th is Eric Willis, 19th is Alex Tanker, and Sam Rogers is 20th. Now, for these drivers, you really gotta pick it up. Daniel Maxwell, 21st, Zachary Fitzwater, 22nd, two-way tie for Ninja Bot and Jeff Corkins for 23rd, 25th is TJ Hanley, 26th is Carson Scott, 27th, JT Hanley, 28th is Henrietta Fitzwater, 29th, Gabriel Wanderley, and 30th with 16 points is Bob Schofield. That's going to be it, and we will see you next time at Wilmot Speedway. Thank you guys for watching.